Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Unboxing and Stuff. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Bellphone BF TD930 UHF DMR Handy Talkie. So let's go ahead and get into the box and just see what comes with it. And then we'll talk a little bit about specs, features, programming, everything that you need or want to know about what this radio can do. Uh, we're going to kind of go over that. So go ahead and stick around and let's get into it. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the box here. And I went ahead and deplasticized everything. That way we don't have to waste time taking that off. So here you see we have our battery pack. This is a 2200 milliamp hour, 7.4 volt battery pack. We have the BF-TD930 itself, and this happens to be the UHF 400 to 480 megahertz model. We then have our charging cradle and in this particular box that they sent me has the uh, European style plugs uh, and I just went ahead and purchased a adapter so I can plug it into a normal wall outlet. Uh, if you were looking to get these and supply them in the US, uh, you know, you'd be able to have them put in whatever plug you wanted. Here's our UHF antenna with a GPS functionality. Here is our lanyard. And then here is our belt clip. So the nice thing here, belt clip does not go on the battery. So it actually goes to the radio itself. So if you want to swap out the battery, you don't have to swap the belt clip along with it. And then underneath here they also include or included the programming cable for computer programming. This is not part of the base uh, accessories but it's something that you can get with the radio as well. Additional accessories that are available for this radio that are not here is they do also have a whip antenna, a supercharger which is a multi-bank charging bank so if you had many of these radios uh, you could charge several of them from a single unit. They also have a earpiece for putting in your ear, you know, if you're in a crowded, loud area, whatever, uh, doing some sort of law enforcement or security, you know, anything like that, that you want that, they have that available. And they also have a speaker microphone available. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the unit together here. So our battery just clips in and then squeeze it shut and then let's go ahead and put this clip on here it's like a small Phillips just make it snug doesn't need to be super tight and this side's really easy to put on it holds the plate flat And snug the other side back down a little tighter. All right, there you go. So our antenna just screws right on top. Okay, let's go ahead and discuss some general specifications and capabilities of the BFTD 930. The frequency ranges that are available are VHF, which is 136 to 174 megahertz, or UHF. 400 to 480 megahertz. You can have up to 128 zones with up to 64 channels in each zone with a maximum of 1024 channels in the radio. This radio is capable of using narrow or wideband channel spacing and the power output is 4 watts on high power and 1 watt on low power. This is a DMR tier 3 radio and it also has the capability to do FM analog modulation as well. This radio has an IP68 rating and it is capable of using ARC4 and AES256 encryption. It has a built-in GPS. It features a man down mode which will trigger an alarm when the radio tilts beyond a certain degree limit which is set in the software. It features a lone worker mode, which is, requires a response from the user 
at set intervals and triggers an alarm if the response is not received. And it also has emergency alert functions. This radio is capable of DMO pseudo trunk, allowing the use of both time slots on a single DMR frequency. It is a full duplex radio, allowing users to talk simultaneously and can act as a single frequency repeater using one time slot for receive and the other for transmit. This radio can automatically roam between multiple sites in a DMR system. These radios are also ad hoc capable and they also have an internal RFID reader. Okay, now we're gonna go over the button and knob layout and we're just gonna talk about everything that's on here. So on top we have our power slash channel knob slash volume knob. You can do all three of those functions. I have it set to just do power and volume. Personally, that's my preference, but you press and hold down, it turns the radio on. And then if you have it capable of doing the dual settings, you just press and click it and let go. And then you can switch between channel and volume. We have our orange emergency button up top here. Over on the side, we have our push to talk. And then we have side button one and side button two. We have our little LED illuminator, or excuse me, LED indicator light. We then have our speaker here. We have our OK key and our return key. We have our up and down keys, direction up, direction down keys. And then we have P1, which is the green button here, and then P2, which is over here with the red. On the side, we have our side cover here, and then underneath, we have our programming port. Which you can unscrew that, this comes off here, and you can see we've got our programming pins, or speaker mic, that would go on there. And that just screws on there if you're not using that to protect those contacts. And then down here at the bottom, we have our microphone. And then of course the clip on the back. And we have our screen here. So let's go ahead and turn this radio on. And I disabled the startup tones there but let's go ahead and peel this off here. Get a nice crisp, clear screen. And it's relatively bright, and then I have it set to a battery saver mode, which is probably not ideal for filming on the camera because that's gonna make it hard to see when that screen goes out. Okay, so let's go ahead and go through our menus here. So we are in the, an analog zone right now, so keep in mind, based on what zone you're in, you're gonna have different menu options. So we have three here in the main menu, scanning zone and settings. Scanning, I don't have a, any scan list set up, so you click. Then we have our zone where you can select. I only have three zones, analog, digital, and digital slash analog. We go into settings. Then first settings in this menu we have is radio wide type stuff. Language, voice setting, LED indication, backlight, tone alert, vibration, box, keypad lock, man down mode, boot interface, covert mode, lone worker, talk around, squelch level. We have channel settings. We change the channel name, transmit power, sending timeout, transmit frequency, receive frequency, squelch. And then system info. We have battery status, device ID, device name, Firmware, CP version, UI version. Okay. So then let's go ahead and look at a digital zone. So you can see we also have this SMS button over here. We click that, new SMS, presets, you can pre write messages. And then you have your inbox and outbox and drafts. You go menu. You can see our contacts list, all contacts, new contact, manual dialing, SMS, same thing as the other main screen SMS button, 
Call log shows outgoing, answered, and missed calls. Scanning, same thing. I don't have a scan group set up on digital. Zone, of course, we can change zones. And settings, so we have all our normal radio-wide stuff. Channel settings, same general stuff, but with a little twist to make it digital. Channel name, transmit power, sending timeout, transmit frequency, receive frequency, color code, slot selection, encrypt settings, transmit context, receive group list, SFR, single frequency repeater, and then system info, same thing that's a radio info. And then if we go back to menu and select zone, if you go to digital slash analog, it's going to be similar to both menus. Contacts, SMS, call log, scanning, zone, and then settings, channel settings. But you're going to see stuff like color code in here as well because it's going between analog and digital. So I want to talk real quick about the buttons that we went over earlier. One thing that I really like about this radio is that nine of the buttons that we talked about uh, initially are capable of being programmed to do a multitude of features and are not locked to their single function or whatever perceived function you'd think that they have. So our orange button up top is one of them. Our two side buttons below the push to talk. All six of these buttons here are all capable of being set to do two different functions. We have short press and long press functions. So basically you can have uh, 18 individual settings just between those nine buttons and I personally am a big fan of buttons that are not locked to do a single function uh, out of the box so that's just something to keep in mind and real quick I'm going to show you we're going to go to a an analog zone and we'll go to analog high power and we're going to <clears throat> show you just how to tweak some of these things in the menu from the front keypad. So here we have our channel name. Zero is also space. And you can see here, you got a little key on the keypad that tells you what each thing you're going to do. So there we go, put the H in there. So you can type in a custom name with letters and numbers. Transmit power, you can select between low and high. Sending timeout, 300 seconds is usually what I set to. Transmit frequency, here you can see I have a 446, which is a ham UHF calling frequency. Receive frequency, you can see I also have 446. Squelch, you can do ctcss slash cdcss for receive and transmit if you want. Right now I don't have any on here, but you can change those. And that's it. So that's, that's a basic analog channel. So you could set up via front panel programming uh, analog and do the same thing with digital but I just wanted to give you a general idea of kind of what that looks like. So now hypothetically this radio would be ready to go, ready to make contacts. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is use our digital watt meter uh, and some adapters and go into a dummy load, a 100 watt dummy load, slightly overbuilt for what we're doing. But we're gonna go ahead and transmit on low and high power and see what this looks like. Now keep in mind these uh, are not perfectly tuned digital watt meters uh, with SWR readings so there may be some room for error. Uh, this is capable of up to 200 watts so I don't know how accurate entirely it is at the lower end of the spectrum 
but we're going to see what it can do here and what it shows. So here we have a analog channel on low power. And according to this, it's putting out approximately half a watt and then an analog channel with high power. Showing approximately 3.2 watts. And then we're here on a digital channel. It's showing 3.24 watts on high power and low power. 4. Point or 0.45, so half a watt approximately. And like I said, I don't know how accurate this thing is. I have not tested it with enough radios to be able to determine um, it's, if it's spot on on these lower end or if it just does better on high end, I don't know. But that is the data right there. So about three and a half watts on high power and half a watt on low power. Okay. Once again, transmitting into a dummy load here, I did want to show that uh, at the different ends of the band, the power does continue to change a little bit. So here at 480 at the top, very top of this band, 0.26 on low power and 2.6 on high. Now I'm going to go ahead and change the frequency to the low end go to 400 once again transmitting into a dummy load so here we go on high power you have 4.1 so it does exceed the 4 watt and then low power half a watt. So take it for what it is. These connectors are very cheap Amazon uh, adapter going into a cheap Amazon jumper cable into a not exactly cheap but uh, you know not uh, you know a bird watt meter or anything like that but a, uh, a digital bench top watt meter that's likely better suited for higher power uh, testing but anyways, I just wanted to show you guys that across the band, the lower end of the band, we exceed the rated four watts on high power, the very top of the band showing two and a half watts, uh, which is less than that, than the rated power. And then the low power going from half a watt to about a quarter watt uh, from low end to high end, not quite hitting the one watt. But like I said, room for error in this thing, I don't know how accurate it is on the low end. So anyways, just want to show you guys that before we moved on. Okay, everybody, here we are taking a look at the programming software for the BFTD 930. And as you can see on our startup screen here, I uh, got our model number, shows our frequency range, firmware, UI version, and serial number of our radio, which this is obtained when you uh, click the read radio button. Then if we open up our general settings tab here, Okay, we'll go to our basic settings here. I'll let you guys look at this for just a second. But a lot of just general features here, device name, passwords, so on and so forth. Go to UI settings, get your voice settings in case you want the radio to actually talk to you. Tone settings, what actually uh, causes the radio to make a tone. So for me right now, I just have it set to SMS and a low voltage. Uh, all the other tones I have disabled for now. Covert mode settings. Uh, you can make things silent or quiet, different things like that, depending if you need to be in a more covert type scenario. Backlight settings, auto. You can open or close on or off and then have it auto timeout and uh, go into a sleep mode. Select which LED settings you want on. As you can see, I have everything initiated there. Vibration settings, if you want the radio to actually vibrate, you can select when it does that. 
keypad lock. I personally don't like keypad locks for my use, maybe for other people, or if I was going to set the radio up for somebody else, that would be uh, acceptable. Uh, but for me, I don't like to use that. And then select button lock, so you can actually select which key is actually going to lock your keypad. So here we go to button settings tab, and this is what I was talking about. You got your nine keys where you can select a multitude of things. I mean, look at that list there. Those are all the different things that you can actually select any one of these keys to do. Long press, short press, and you can set the duration that uh, equivalates a press. So uh, long press, uh, 1,000 milliseconds, so one mil or one second uh, long press emergency long press exit duration so 2000 milliseconds two seconds so that's for emergency on and off to initiate the emergency just press it for a second turn it off you actually have to press and hold it for a little bit longer but anyway so you're gonna get all that then you got your one touch call stuff I obviously don't have any of that stuff set up at the moment then we go to our menu, menu settings here and through here you can actually select what stuff you want to be uh, changeable on the radio. So if you were setting this up for somebody uh, and you didn't want them to be able to go in and literally change anything, you, know, you just come in here and unselect it all. And then that prevents them from being able to actually get in and change any of the settings. So for a company or a business, maybe that's the way to go. You know, then that you don't, way you don't have to worry about your employees changing things that they shouldn't be uh, or messing with things they just don't understand what they are as well. So, yeah, as you can see here, there's quite a bit of different stuff that you can turn on, on and off and change, uh, which is nice. If, also, if you just want to condense the menu down to be just the actual things that you care about, um, then that's a good place to come in and do that. So if we go here to our location settings, you can see we can mess with the GPS settings for the radio. So currently it's off. We also have battery save and high performance, which is going to give you the most accurate uh, GPS data. And then you can set up how it's actually going to uh, go off and uh, you know send your information, the trigger controls down here distance, uh, time, you know, power on, power off, stuff like that. So you can set up different features to basically decide when you want the GPS data to be uh, acquired and uh, transmitted out as well. Let me go down here to loan worker mode. So you can turn that on or off. And then so you can set the time response. So you, in this case, it's 10 minutes. Um, and then loan worker reminder time 10 seconds. So you can make it a button press or a speech emission uh, as the response. So that way if somebody was going down in a hole by themselves, you set the, the uh, response time to 25 minutes. And then if they don't respond with within you know that 25 minute interval every time, then you say, hey, maybe something's wrong. We should go check on them, make sure they're OK. So you can set that to as high or as low as you want. Uh, depending on the kind of work somebody was doing. Then we have the man down feature. You can turn that on and so you can have it tilt or no movement or both. Um, the I know like a no movement type deal would be something that like a lot of like fire um, emergency responder type uh, would be a, a very good situational setting. You know, if you got smoke inhalation and you fell down and uh, passed out or something, you get them no movement, and then that would trigger an alarm to let people know that they need to come find you, uh, which is pretty cool. Or the tilt is specifically, you know, if you're falling over, somebody fell over, depending on the type of work you're doing, then it would uh, initiate the man down alarm. So entry delay, so you got 10 seconds to get into it, exit delay 10 seconds, man down pre alert times 5 seconds. So that's a pretty cool feature. Uh, depending on the kind of work you're using this radio with. Then we got our emergency alarm system here. We have our digital alarm. And yeah, you can see I have that currently off as well. But then you can select what type of alarm you want to be 
uh, enabled with your digital alarm. Uh, and then you can select the, the mode, so it'll just turn it on just so you can see. Emergency mode, alarm, alarm with call, only emergency call. And then revert channel, what channel it goes back to for your emergency. <clears throat> then you can do priority interrupt. And uh, set a few other settings in here. And then we have our analog alarm, same type of deal, siren only. Uh, this one you can't quite do as much as you can with a digital, just based on uh, the capabilities of an analog channel, an analog radio. So then we have our scan settings, sampling uh, 100 milliseconds. And then our scan list you can set up. As you can see, I don't have anything in there already from the preload I did, but if I wanted to start adding channels, you know, I could add it, make a digital scan list, make an analog scan list, everything scan list, whatever you want. You got talk back, first priority channel, and then second priority channel, transmit designated channel. So you can use selected or you can make a multitude, multitude of other uh, decisions on that as well. So we have our roam settings here. So active site search. So if you're in some sort of like a trunking network uh, for like the DMR3 stuff that we were talking about earlier, then uh, this is kind of where you'd want to go for that. And uh, then your radio's linking up to whatever site you get uh, within range of. So you can set your DBM level, so the receive level from the site, um, based on channels you can build, and then that way, when it gets below that threshold, then it knows, okay, I'm going to cut over to that site. So that's a cool feature. That's not something I have here in my area to be able to test or play with at the moment, but it is pretty neat. So DMR basic settings, we have device IDs, repeater IDs, all sorts of hang times and durations for different things, refuse calls, um, you know, all sorts of just general settings in here, even authentication stuff. And then you go in here, we have our encrypt setting, which I have unchecked at the moment because uh, I'm just operating this uh, as a ham radio operator on uh, ham frequencies and encryption is not legal for us to use, but it does have that feature built in and has a basic encryption, uh, ARC4 and AES-256 encryption as part of it. Uh, on the business side of things, you know, I'm not sure exactly what all licenses allow that, but that would be potentially where something like that could come in useful or, uh, you know, you suppose if you were going to do it in a law enforcement or something along those lines, then that would be another exception. <clears throat> so then we have our DMR contacts here. You can see it have a single simplex complex or contact in here, a group call with a call 99, just standard stuff just to get a channel in here for us to test on. So then contact group, you have your top contacts, and then I have a simplex specific group here where that is in there. And receive group, I just have receive group one, which I also have simplex in there as well. Pre-message, SMS, you can type in stuff. You know, get something pre-built so that you can just send out a predetermined text message. If you're saying or asking the same questions over and over again, that's how you would do that. Then we have our zones, which I have pre-populated. So I have an analog digital and a digital analog zone. And I went ahead and populated each zone with the corresponding channels that I built for that purpose. And then we come down here for our channels and same kind of setup, but we have the digital channels. So here's a digital channel screen. This is what you'd actually see. So slot selection, you can do the duplex mode or simplex. Scan room list, like I said, I never actually got any of the scan stuff set up for that. TDMA mode. 
and then you could do the channel slot calibrator, unqualified, qualified, and first choice. Scan, roam, single frequency relay, receive only, priority interrupt, voice frame check, and then you can do channel compatible mode for Moto, Motorola, HYT. Uh, you got your color code there, and then you have your receive frequency, and you can select the receive group, and uh, have a few other options here to select indications. Uh, one thing I do like that I thought was kind of handy is if you were setting this up for repeaters specifically, uh, you could actually just type in 5 for 5 megahertz. And then so we have type in our receive frequency and then click the mapping button. You can see it's 446 right now. And there you go, it auto automatically offsets it by 5 megahertz. Or go back to zero for simplex channel. And there you go, 446. So that's kind of cool. I like that. Default address, uh, digital emergency warning system. So you can add that in there. Transmit criteria, call admission conditions, data call acknowledgement, your transmit power, timeout timer. Like I said, 300 seconds is what I usually like to do. And then uh, how long until you can key up again if you've reached that 300 second timeout. <clears throat> so there's a digital channel. And let's take a look at the, an analog channel. See it's a little simpler, a little bit less going on. So scan list, you, get, you can check, set your channel bandwidth, 25 kilohertz or 12 and a half kilohertz for wide and narrow band. Make it a receive only channel if you don't want to be able to transmit Companding enable, so companding would be some sort of a, uh, not quite encryption I believe, but uh, like a scrambling effect uh, for the audio <coughs> on analog. A waiting mark, I'm not exactly sure what that one does. I'll, I'll have to look that up. If I find out the answer, I'll uh, post it up in this section of the video. And then we have the same feature for uh, setting our offset if we want to from receive to transmit. And then you can do CTCSS or CDSS, or CDCSS, excuse me, uh, tones, depending on, you know, what kind of setup you're running. Uh, there's that, or there's the digital you can set as well. Set your squelch level. Receive squelch mode. Monitor squelch mode. So if you wanted it, it when you, in monitor mode, if you wanted it to be just carrier, so you hear anybody who's on that frequency, then you could do that. Or if you only want to hear people that are actually talking using your correct uh, PL, then you can do the other one. But channel change squelch mode, receive squelch mode, monitor squelch mode. And then over here we have our transmit, analog warning system for our alarm. Same thing, you can set your, uh, your PL for analog or digital PL. Busy channel lockout, eliminate tail tone, and then your power, and timeout timer, and then rekey. And then you have, finally, a digital to analog channel here. And this is kind of an interesting feature, uh, let's see, where it uh, can receive and transmit back on either analog or digital. Um, so you basically have both settings completely uh, and you would set that up and this would allow you to cross back and forth. I guess if you had multiple users, some using analog channels and some using digital, uh, this would allow you to uh, talk to those people, which is kind of an interesting and neat feature that uh, I don't think I've seen uh, on any of the other radios that I own. So. That's it. So that's basically the a general overview. Um, you can write your data here, read the data, and save the data, and come back and open it. And uh, you know, if you built a load, you could put it into multiple radios. Um, but yeah, I think that about covers the uh, general overview of our uh, programming software. So let's go ahead and move on and do some uh, field testing, and uh, then we'll close the video after that. Okay, here we are, got the garage open and we're gonna be doing some testing. I have a friend out in the field 
and he's approximately three and a quarter miles away. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, just do some radio checks back and forth on analog and digital. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and edit out our call signs for privacy reasons, uh, but just note that they are being used. You're just not gonna see it in the video. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, here's an audio test, three and a quarter miles through uh, some obstructions. One, two, three, three, two, one. Test clear. Okay, here's an audio test, three and a quarter miles through uh, some obstructions. One, two, three, three, two, one. Test clear. All right, copy your transmission. You're coming in full, just about full quieting here. Testing, one, two, three, three, two, one. Hi, copy your transmission. You're coming in full, just about full quieting here. Testing, one, two, three, three, two, one. Copy that. I got a pretty good copy from you. A little bit of noise on the background there, but definitely, uh, definitely can copy your audio pretty well. Let's go ahead and cut over to uh, DMR mode and we'll test again. Copy that. Okay, DMR testing. Three and a quarter mile. One, two, three. Three, two, one. Testing. Test clear. Okay, DMR testing. Three and a quarter mile. One, two, three. Three, two, one. Testing. Test clear. I copy your transmission. You're full quieting. Sound great. Testing. One, two, three, three, two, one. I copy your transmission. You're full quieting. Sound great. Testing. One, two, three, three, two, one. Copy that. Uh, it sounds really good. The digital really cleans up the audio and cuts out that noise. So. Uh, I'd say this test is 100% uh, good, and at this point, we'll go ahead and move on. Okay, everybody, so there you saw a test from in my garage uh, to my buddy, who's a three and quarter, three and a quarter miles approximately away, um, and the audio was not bad on analog and much better on digital, as you saw there. Uh, one thing you didn't see is we were able to do a second test, which we were unable to record. Uh, however, I went up to a hilltop and he was at his house when we had clear line of sight. And we were able to talk 34 and a half miles on both analog and DMR digital. And the audio is actually much better than the three and a quarter mile. Uh, but keep in mind, we didn't have any obstructions like we did with the three and a quarter. So that's something to keep in mind with these radios. Yeah, you can talk a really long way if you have good, clear line of sight. If you start throwing in stuff like we have in our neighborhood here, you know, got right across the street in the direction towards my uh, buddy, uh, there's a two-story house. There's actually two two-story houses in that general direction. And then he was up in the trees. I mean, there was all sorts of obstructions between us, but we were still able to talk a, a what I would say a decent, relatively uh, efficient distance at three and a quarter miles. So uh, that's just something to keep in mind for that test. Uh, there was a lot of obstructions there, but with no obstructions, we were able to get 34 and a half miles. I mean, I think that's insane. That's a really long way. I, I was not expecting that to even work at that distance. So, uh, and just keep in mind the, the lower power that we're putting out according to our watt meter at this frequency that we tested on. So what we're going to do here is this is an IP68 waterproof rated radio. Um, for the closing of this uh, video, I'm going to go ahead and stuff it in a little uh, cup of water here and uh, then we're going to talk about it. So we'll see how this goes. As you can see, I got the screen on and we're submerged just above the antenna connection point there. So we'll see if it turns off at all during this, we'll know there was a problem. And if it keeps running, then great, it keeps running. So the BFTD 930, final thoughts. What do I think about this radio overall from my experiences thus far? Fit and finish, 
I really like it. It feels really good in the hand. Feels like it's made of uh, higher quality plastics than you know your Baofengs or real cheap radios. Is it quite as good feeling as an actual Motorola? You know, thousands of dollars uh, radios. Not quite, but I think in in its uh, general price range, it feels like a good radio. It feels like it's going to last and hold up, not just fall apart. Uh, after a little bit of use. So that's really good. The button presses to me all feel great. Uh, they're, they're positive and you can just really feel confident when you hit a key that it actually was pressed and uh, the action was taken. The screen on here I think is pretty good. I like it. It displays all the information you need to see. I mean there's not really too much more to say about that. You know any of these screens in direct daylight can be a little challenging to use but uh, I feel like this one, you know, a little shade of the hand or holding it in the right orientation and no problem at all. Uh, but overall, I think it, it works great uh, inside and outside. The uh, layout of all the buttons and everything, I really like that and the ability to program uh, all the buttons to do whatever task you want them to do. It have so many programmable buttons on this radio. For me is a massive win like i i love that that's one of my favorite things about radios like this so as far as programming front panel programming pretty simple i mean not too much to it uh, i think it's acceptable uh, and the computer software for this radio i actually really like it i think it's got a little bit of refining that could be done but overall, it's very clean, it's laid out and organized well, and it's just easy to work through to get stuff programmed in here. So that's something I definitely do appreciate uh, about the software for this radio and this radio in general. The audio quality and power uh, is pretty much what you'd expect from an HT. Uh, I think it's better than uh, the Alence, which is what my friend was using for our test. Uh, the audio quality I think is better off this in my personal opinion uh, and the fact that we were able to talk 34 and a half miles uh, both ways send SMS messages on DMR everything um, is incredible to me so I thought that was great I think in the right conditions this can really do some impressive distance talking in more realistic conditions, uh, you know, I still think three and a quarter miles was a, a nice uh, range test for this radio. So overall, I think this radio is pretty solid and at the price point that it's going to be going for, I think, I think it's definitely a competitor. Um, the, there's only, I guess, two things that I could say. There's one thing I don't like about this particular exact radio. I don't know about the model in general, but this exact one that I have. Um, and then there's something else that I think uh, is more of a preference issue, but we'll talk about what I don't like first. The one thing that I don't like is some of the little stickers on this particular radio are just kind of a little off kilter. They're not placed exactly where they should be. Uh, the side sticker here I noticed, and then underneath this side port cover, uh, for the hand mic or programming, uh, there's a little foam uh, part that goes in there and it's just off kilter a little bit. So this may be a fluke, this may be a one-off issue, uh, but it's just the stickers are a little off and for someone like me, that kind of just bugs me a little bit. But that's the one thing that I don't like about that radio, okay? So I had to say it, that's, you know, me being transparent and honest with you. That's the one thing I found that I don't like at this point. The other thing that I wish was an option, but is currently not, um, and maybe things change in the future, maybe they don't, is that this is a single band radio and I really wish it was dual band. You know, I just, I like the ability to have a single radio pop in between bands. Um, I don't know engineering wise how complicated that is or is not. You know, I'm not an engineer. I, uh, can't really speak to that, but I would like to see this radio in a dual band configuration. I think that would open it up to a lot more users. However, as a single band radio that you can get in VHF or UHF, I think it's totally suitable and it's going to be able to work for, you know, if you're using a single band, it's going to work for you. Uh, there's going to be 
you know, no issues with that. So something to keep in mind, single band radio, and then just, I would check out your stickers when you get them, just see how they look, make sure everything looks good. Um, and I think that's about it for this radio. Uh, if you guys are interested in, in any of the bits and bobs I used for testing here, the watt meters, cables, uh, dummy load, we're using my little power pole power strip to power everything here with. I'll have links for all that stuff down below so you guys can check that out. And uh, you know, like I said, if you wanna purchase it, that's uh, where you'll be able to do that. If you're interested in the radio itself, I'm gonna put a link to the Bell Phone website, specifically to the TD930 page. If you guys wanna go on there and look up the radio and or have any interest in contacting the uh, manufacturer uh, to uh, sell or you know whatever you wanna do with the radios, get in contact with them to buy them, however. Um, but anyways, I'll put that down below and you guys can contact them as well. Uh, I think that about wraps it up for this review. If you guys have any questions specific to anything on this radio, feel free to go ahead and write it down in the comments below. If there's anything else you'd like to see, uh, let me know. And I have a pretty busy schedule, so I usually only do a single video uh, for each item. But uh, if there's enough support for seeing something else, another feature or anything like that on this radio, then uh, perhaps we can make that happen. So leave a comment, like the video if you liked it. Uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There's gonna be more content coming out on Bell Phone Radios uh, in the future as we go forward. So if you wanna stick around, I'll actually make a playlist and start adding all these radio videos to that. So you guys can go to one spot and see all of that content. All right, everybody, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.